How's it going everyone? This is Eflex and welcome back to another A Producers Approach video. In this video we're going to be looking at Tut Tut Child's song, Yakin the White. So if you guys haven't watched my videos in the past, I basically break down these videos into three separate sections. I have an intro backstory section, breakdown analysis section, and an outro section. So this song by Tut Tut Child, Yakin the White, sorry if I butcher the name is part of the We're All Mad Here EP, and this EP was released on Monster Cat back in the day. But the title song for this EP, Singularity, was the only song that was released on Monster Cat and had a video on Monster Cat. And that was on the album 0011, which is pretty interesting because, in my own personal opinion, most of the songs on this EP, other than Singularity, are really good and preferably more of my favorites than Singularity. Singularity is not one of my favorite songs from the EP or from Tut Tut Child, which is really surprising because at this time period, Tut Tut Child was amongst one of my top artists, if not my top artists that I really liked on Monster Cat. So it's really interesting how um, they chose Singularity for the actual video release, but the songs in this EP are really good as well. As I mentioned in the Secret Weapon EP, this EP also had songs in different genres. So as you see here, this song is a glitch hop song. There's another song in the EP called Alive, which is a liquid drum and bass song. And then there's another song on this album that's an electro song which is really cool because not many EPs were you know branching off from other genres within the EP at this time period like people were just making like pure dubstep EPs or like a purely house EP like they didn't really shift the genres that much but unfortunately this EP didn't really have a lot of recognition so I didn't for the longest time know that a lot of the songs on this EP were tied to this EP. Um, I just only knew Singularity. They released the song Card Shark, which is another dubstep song, similar, but a little bit different than Singularity, um, as a free release. And then Alive and Yakin White. And this song I found like a few years later after the EP release. So. It's pretty interesting how um, a lot of the songs on this EP are different genres, kind of like the Secret Weapon EP, but the Secret Weapon EP was, I want to say, promoted and marketed a little bit better than this EP. But again, this EP came out in the kind of earlier days of Monster Cat, so their promotional techniques weren't exactly the best at, yet at the time, but this song is really good in itself. It's a really hard glitch hop song. And it's similar to Dance To It, but I would say Dance To It is the more known and iconic glitch hop song from Tut Tut Child off of the 007 Solus EP, I mean album, sorry. But this song is not bad in itself. It's really sound design heavy and it's a little bit interesting with the blend of the sound design of Tut Tut Child and just the overall structure of the song. So. I'm glad to do an APA video for the song because I like to listen to the song every once in a while when I want something a lot harder with more sound design. Plus, it's one of those songs that's like really underrated and not really known even amongst the Monster Cat community, which is also kind of interesting. But just on YouTube, trying to find the song is um, really tough. So anyways, this is Tut Tut Child's song, Yakinth White. I hope I'm saying that correctly, and we'll get into the song now. All right, so you kind of hear this arp in the beginning. Um, just like da, 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 da. like that's a really unique sound to Tut Tut Child as well. And then you kind of hear the bass starting to come up um, through like a filter and volume automation until finally like um, the bass sound comes in and then the kick and the snare come in and they go into a halftime rhythm. And you kind of hear that bass sound um, just kind of 
already roaring just right off the bat um 17 seconds into the song and this bass sound by tut tut child was literally the sound i really enjoyed from tut tut child that's the sound design that really put it up there um in terms of like notable artists on monster cat when this ep was released like i would want to say like late 2012 early 2013 like that sound was nothing I'd ever heard before and it sounded so similar to like rock music which I was just kind of transitioning from listening to more rock music into more EDM like that was kind of like the catalyst I guess you want to say that kind of hard bass sound um and I don't know how Tut Tut Child made it to this day I really don't know but it really is a unique sound of Tut Tut Child if you hear that like bass sound I I could personally tell you like that's a Tut Tut Child song so Anyways, let's keep going. All right, so within that section, it's really cool how the kind of lead and the bass line both play the same thing. So the lead's playing it in the higher frequency and the bass line's playing in the lower frequency, but the bass line is the one that has the forefront, so the, the focus is on that bass line. And you just really hear that like aggression almost on that bass line. This isn't even the most aggressive part of the song. So um, this is kind of just the kind of break section building up into the drop. So um, the vocal chop or vocal sample comes in in this part and you hear um, the vocal sample come in. And then like the kind of vocal hook, I guess, of the sample is you go hard um, or something like that or go hard because like it's going to be a really hard drop per se. So that's just really interesting and the sound design parts and the drop i'll try and do my best to uh, break it down as best as i can but i didn't make the actual sound so i can't give you the actual sound design-esque things but i can give you what i think the structure in terms of like the song is and the sounds are so just forewarning as we go forward so let's keep going All right, so um, that was the build up. There was like a slow kick build up, but um, there wasn't anything too crazy. The kick was lowered and maybe filtered, kick, 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 and then a little bit breath of air, and then um, you had the kind of vocal hook, kind of saying whatever it was saying, and then after that, it would just drop pretty much right off the bat, um, and that's a pretty nice drop. It's pretty hard, so get ready for all that sound design sounds but i didn't hear really any vfx leading into this maybe like a small uh vfx maybe not as prominent as some of the other songs so anyways let's get into the drop All right, so the first part of this drop is really cool. You really get that bass line going. And then I noticed there's different leads playing and there's almost like a calm response between the leads. So one lead plays and then another lead answers, which is really cool. So it's definitely really cool to kind of hear that within like a really heavy bass line. So there's like a calm response happening at the same time um, as that you know prominent bass line's playing. Um, the rhythm is more of a halftime rhythm, but it does seem a little bit faster in terms of like variation in rhythm than some other glitch hop songs, which is like a more exaggerated kind of, um, percussion rhythm or just like the notations with that percussion rhythm makes it seems a little more exaggerated. The song seems to be moving at like a pretty good pace for a song being in 110 BPM, which is kind of the same uh, rhythmic tempo for a lot of rap music and stuff like that. So an R&B, so it's definitely slower than house, which is normally around 128 to 130 BPM, but it feels like it's moving really fast. So anyways, let's keep going. <laughs> All 
All right, so that drop was really cool. Um, you did hear the go hard vocal sample come in every once in a while, and you do hear those leads kind of having a calm response section with each other. Then you hear that tut tut child wub, which is oh, really good sound, man. Really good sound that tut tut child wub. Oh man, and it's really cool how the bass line is pretty much the main focus, but like the different um, lead sounds, you kind of hear them. Um, Kind of like from me wearing headphones right now. I feel it sounds like I hear one in one ear, like the left ear and the other in the right ear, so to speak. So that almost is like some type of panning in terms of both of the lead sounds being played. But it's really cool. There are other little different sounds thrown in there as well, like different kind of uh, samples and like VFX um, kind of thrown in here and there. And um, it's really cool like how there's a lot of calm response happening but the bass line is just kind of like the main drive of the song and the percussion there is you kind of hear the open hi-hats a little bit more than some of the other songs so that creates like a nice rhythm for the percussion and stuff like that so anyways this is the more melodic part and I don't know to me this sounds like something you'd hear in like England or Italy or something some type of like the instrumentation just the sound of the instruments just sounds like some type of European vibe to the song so I don't know exactly how to explain it but anyways let's keep going All right, so that's really cool. So you kind of almost have that like jazzy kind of lead um, playing the call, and then you have the wubs on the bottom answering with the response, which is really cool. I really like that call and response because it's like two kind of unique sounds doing a call and response. And then there also is kind of like a pad playing in the background. Um, which is really interesting as well. So like that whole section, the percussion doesn't change as well. Um, it's still halftime rhythm with some of the hi-hats playing, but it's just like the pacing's really good. The variation so far is really good. And just the overall sound design for the sounds is really good and structuring. So um, now it's gonna get back into the drop part again. So that was just kind of like a little break section. So it's about to go hard. <laughs> All right, so that section is pretty similar to the first section of the drop, which is pretty heavy sound design and a lot of focus mainly on the bass line. Um, really good. The bass line has a lot of calm response happening with the bass line playing and then some wubs answering at the end of phrases. But actually in this section, I was trying to focus a little bit more on the high end sounds. And it's interesting because there's like different leads that play and different sounds but then sometimes it's just one note sometimes it's a couple notes just complementing um, certain phrases and then sometimes it's like an actual like mini lead which is really interesting and like yeah it does bounce between my headphones so it does sound like some's left pan some is right pan so if you're wearing headphones you kind of hear it on both sides which is really interesting um, an effect to do what especially with panning in music where you can just kind of designate one sound to one side or the other side or you can leave in the middle to where you hear it in the mix uh kind of in uh what do they call that dual mono or stereo mono um it's kind of like right in the middle which you would think is like mono which is like a single sound but then it's like stereo so you hear it in both sides of your headphones um it's been a while since i've looked up that term and had to use that term so 
Uh, if I'm wrong, feel free to leave a comment on what the actual terminology is. But I just noticed that there is some panning um, between those sounds, and it's not always the same lead playing the same thing. It's like a one-shot note here and like a couple notes here, and then like a different lead plays uh, like a little more notes to complement that lead section, which is really interesting. And then I like that tapering and that drop where it kind of like pauses. It kind of almost like tape stops or like winds down a little bit and then comes right back into that drop so this song is really good so far the structure is really good i like that bass sound a lot i actually thought there were more wubs in the song but actually it's just the bass line really just uh doing a lot of work in the song so anyways um we're gonna get into this break section which has that kind of european vibe feel so let's keep going so that break section is really cool so it starts off with that lead and then it starts off with the alternate kind of sound replacing the bass line sound for a little bit um, within that section and it's just the lead and that other kind of pad sound playing the chord progression um, which is really cool um, and that lead sound just slowly kind of builds up and then the kick and the snare just kind of come full in after that and you see the kick, the uh, sub bass, and the snare, and you hear that bass line just come right back in. And it's introduced a little bit, I think, before the kick even starts. It's like slowly brought in through like filtering and volume automation, which is really cool. And then that section just drops. And man, is that like crazy. I mean, when do you hear the, uh, such an aggressive bass sound in a break section of a song? Uh, this is one of the few songs where you hear that. So, um, definitely really cool and then you have the vocal sample come in and it's kind of all chopped up in a sense um because i don't even know what the vocal sample is saying um even all these years other than when it says the go hard part which is i think the main kind of vocal hook chop there so um yeah it's just kind of interesting but that sample kind of comes in and then i think it's going to be a similar build up for the second drop but we'll see in a little bit All right, so in this break section, I noticed that um, the sounds actually filtered out a little bit more than they did in the first kind of build-up section before the first drop, which is really interesting. Um, I guess like some of the other songs we've looked at, this one, this one build-up is trying to indicate like, okay, this is going to be the build-up before the end and final drop of the song, so then we're going to outro from there. So the drop's going to be exaggerated a little bit more. So you hear the vocal chops, they don't actually change in volume. Everything else kind of goes down in volume, and the kick slowly gets filtered up um, as it plays a little bit more frequently, and then there's a breath of air, but the vocal chop itself and the vocal hook um, doesn't really go down in volume. I think it stays actually in the same volume throughout the whole time it builds up. So that's really interesting. And... Um, we're going to get into this drop section here. I think the percussion changes. So um, I'll make sure I'll kind of note that. And if there's any, if there isn't any other big changes, then I'll let the song play out to the end and talk about what I thought I heard. So let's keep going. All right, so the percussion did change, which is really cool. Um, it's still in halftime rhythm, 
but you don't have the hi-hats playing and you don't have the snare always playing on the third. So you just really hear the kick, which is really cool because in a lot of the spaces you hear like the wubs come in, you hear the kind of lead higher sounds playing in the background and just the main focus is on that bass line. So it almost exaggerates like the feel of um, this drop, almost like a swing beat, I'd almost want to say, but it just is really exaggerated for you to focus a lot on the sounds that are really being played. So those, that like really hard bass drop, like you really kind of hear it and kind of feel it, especially this section, because there's no hi-hats really like um, being played as often. And then there's at times no snare being played. Like there might be a snare like on the first halftime rhythm and then the next rhythm there isn't a snare. So um, it's really cool. I really like that. It kind of exaggerates an already kind of halftime beat. So it exaggerates the beat even more um, because I think the sound design and the structure is similar to the beginning of the first drop. But just because of the percussion change just changes the whole feel of this drop, um, which is really cool. I like the variation and just the overall feel of the song. So. I think the rest of the song is pretty similar to the last drop, so I'll let the whole song play out and then I'll talk more after that. So that was Tut Tut Child Song, Yakinth White. I'll back up a little bit. So the second part of the second drop was pretty similar in terms of structure and all the sounds are pretty similar um, to the second part of the second drop. But what I really want to focus on in this section is the outro, which is really cool. So the percussion doesn't really stop in the outro and it's actually the most melodic part of the song, I say, is this outro section. Um, with like a lead melody playing along with the percussion so like the lead melody plays and then there is um some calm response in this section with the bass line answering but the bass line is not as hard um as the drop section and it just seems a little bit more melodic with that um almost i want to say european sounding synth uh playing or almost it could almost even be interpreted as almost like an 8-bit synth i guess you would almost say um, being played and uh, that plays out and the percussions pretty much full blast like I don't think it really changed all that much from the drop into that kind of outro section and then eventually the percussion fades out and then you just hear the uh, lead sound play and then kind of end out and you hear the reverb and stuff like that but the outro section I really liked because it's the lead was playing um and that was like the main focus and the drive of all the percussion was still going. And you kind of hear that a little bit better and paired a little bit better with the bass sound since it's not as hard and not the main focus. So it's just a little bit interesting to note that, um, at least for me, like the most melodic section with like the chord progression kind of paired with the lead is kind of at the outro of the song, at least for me. But anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Um, what can I say about the song? Man, this is one of those hard songs that's really good, but it's not actually as sound designy as I really thought it was. A lot of the movement um, in the main drops come from the high-end lead sounds. I kind of just kind of bloop in here and there and different leads um, kind of thrown in here and there at the end of phrases. Uh, because there isn't that many wubs in the song that I know. It's actually the bass lines just like playing along the chord progression there are some wubs with that calm response within the bass line but a lot of the movement comes from the hi-hats and the note like the movement 
um, within the synth leads and notes and the higher end frequencies and the bass line. So that's really cool. Um, I just love how hard this song is in terms of its drops. It's just really good. I like that syncopated, almost like uh, beginning of the second drop where the snare doesn't always come in on the one and the three. Like the snare kind of dips out every once in a while or is not included. So that halftime feels even more exaggerated. Um, and the uh, overall feel and structure of the song is really good. I mean, I've never heard like a harder break section, not even in the drop, just in the beginning intro break and the middle break section, just like go wham, like with that bass line, like, wow, this is one of the few songs where, you know, you find that like bass line just go wham, like right off the bat. So anyways, um, just the takeaways that I really love about the song, um, these beginning of the first the beginning of the second drop that kind of almost syncopated percussion rhythm the bass lines oh so good the structure of the song is insanely good with those hard bass and break sections um and just kind of like the kind of uplifting kind of feel and that kind of almost european vibe i get from the song from listening to it i don't exactly know what it is but it's like a really cool vibe it's like really kind of i don't know i feel like i could listen to this while like strolling around in like europe or something i don't i don't know why exactly for me but that's just my opinion but anyways hope you guys like this video please like comment subscribe check out tata child's music if you have not already if not, check out this EP. It's definitely really cool. Um, there are a lot of other good songs in this EP that are really underrated. So anyways, I hope to see you guys in the next A Producers Approach video. And have a good one, everyone. Peace.